Well, hello and welcome to Hey Ma, What About Goats? It's a presentation that offers considerations for raising goats in Virginia's Northern Piedmont. I'm Jim Hillary. I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent for Virginia Cooperative Extension in Loudoun County, Virginia. This agriculture education program is brought to you by the Virginia Cooperative Extension Loudoun Office and the Loudoun County Public Library. The program's purpose is to help individuals and family members make informed decisions about buying and raising goats. It's not so much a class on how to, we'll talk a little bit about husbandry, but mostly it's focused on the decision-making process with regards to, to buying or not buying goats. And ideally at the end of this presentation, uh, everyone will have uh, considered why they should or they shouldn't buy goats, and they'll be able to celebrate as a family, much as the one we see photographed uh, in this image here. Some terms that we'll use or you may hear throughout the presentation. The buck is a male goat, uh, generally over one year of age, and a doe is a female goat over one year of age. Oftentimes you heard, hear those terms used with deer, but they also apply to, to goats. A doling is a young female, uh, less than a year old, and a kid is a baby goat of either sex. Okay, first, we're going to talk about reasons why you should consider getting goats. And we'll start off with goats are gentle with an asterisk. And the asterisk points down to the bottom where it says most of the time. And goats are sized well for entry level handling. Again, most of the time. And you can see in these photographs, there's a young girl who's out playing with, with the goats on the far left. Those are kid goats, less than a year old. And in the middle there, that's the doe, the mother, and, and one of her kids. But again, as, uh, as I had indicated, most of the time, all I have to do is look over to the far right, and there's a picture of Sasquatch. Sasquatch is a, is a buck, and uh, in his prime weighed 300 pounds. And he, he was mostly gentle, but there were definitely times throughout the season when you would not want to let children into the pasture with Sasquatch. Uh, goats may be inexpensive to buy, feed, or care for. And in this slide, we see several photographs, and photographs of, of many different uh, items that you'll likely have on hand if you have goats. Uh, and also pointing to over in the upper left hand, you can see a, a mama goat and, uh, and her baby. And the baby's wearing a jacket and there's heat lamps. In the lower left, there's a water trough and it has a heater in it. And if you have a heater in the water so that it doesn't freeze in the winter, it means you also have to have power or electricity running out to your water trough. So all of these things, uh, uh, they have cost and, and they can build up. Reasons to consider goats. Uh, goat production may be profitable. I'm going to emphasize may be profitable. Oftentimes a profitable goat operation uh, is one that has a scale or a size that allows the owner or the producer to uh, actually make money on the margins from, from the sale of the goats, or perhaps the uh, producer is raising high-end breeding stock, another way that uh, goat production may be profitable. Some of the considerations that, to have in mind that detract from profits are the infrastructure and the equipment that's necessary to go along with raising goats. In this slide, we, we show a tractor and we show a stock trailer. And, and candidly, you do not have to have a tractor and you do not have to have a stock trailer in order to raise goats. However, both come in handy when you reach the size of operation where you may become profitable. You can actually grab a goat, toss it in the back of the car and move it from one location to another. But that stock trailer certainly is handy when you're moving more than one. Other considerations or reasons to consider goats. Uh, raising goats is an activity for the entire family. Uh, raising goats helps children develop discipline and regard for animals. And in these photographs, you can see, once again, there's a child in, out there in that pasture and uh, interacting one-on-one uh, -on -one with, with those goats. Um, in the lower right-hand photograph, you'll see uh, there's, a, there's a, a mama goat and she's preparing to kid. So she's getting ready to give birth. Um, and in the photograph, there's a human mom, and on her back is a baby or a human kid. They're all together, and you can see that uh, from the family's perspective, this, this operation and raising goats is, in fact, a family operation. Raising goats presents parents with teaching opportunities, and raising goats can increase teens' career choices. Let me focus on the second one first, and that create a context 
the idea being here that children who uh, are exposed to livestock and, and goats in this case, they gain insights into, uh, into life that just aren't available to youth who grow up in, in urban areas or suburban areas where, where they don't have uh, access or the ability to, to interact with, with animals. And the way that it influences career choices, uh, interacting with the, with the goats pro provides uh, experiences that uh, they can be good, they can be bad, they may help to influence career choices. For example, it, it may be that a child after working with goats may decide that as an adult, they don't want to have anything to do with goats. And so certainly wouldn't choose a career uh, relating to livestock. However, on the other hand, um, a different child might say that they really enjoy growing up in handling and interacting with goats and would like to continue that as an adult and so much so that they would consider some sort of a career associated with agriculture. So that's the context for saying that raising goats can increase a, a teen's career choices. Goat show and sale events may provide teens with money to offset college tuition. Uh, and goat clubs exist for education and fellowship. And, and, and both of those are true. In many of the land-grant universities like Virginia Tech, uh, you're gonna find students who are, are attending and much of their tuition cost has been offset by the sale of livestock that they raised and they showed through 4-H. In many counties, there's a show and sale. It comes around generally once a year, oftentimes associated with the local county fair. And there's an auction. 4-H members who have raised animals are able to sell them. The auction participants uh, are generally very aggressive about competing with each other and bring in a premium price for those animals. Um, I could go over some misconceptions about goats. Um, one of them is goats are not very smart. And I show you this photograph because the, the goat in the forefront here uh, is actually smart enough to figure out that a farmer leaves a, a hay bale or another item of that size uh, near the fence. It serves as a perfect springboard to hop over the fence and escape. And so, the idea that a goat is not very smart certainly isn't true for this one and is able to put together the, the idea of phys physics and spacing and size and speed, um, put all that together uh, in order to, to jump over the fence and get out of a, a pasture. People often think that goats are very rugged and they don't require a great deal of shelter or shade. And, and they probably get that idea because they've, they've watched on a, in movies or on television, uh, wild goats in, in the Rockies, they're out to, on the side of a cliff somewhere. But for domestic goats, uh, this simply isn't true. Goats do require shelter and shade. In particular, goats uh, need shelter to get out of the rain. And in Virginia, oftentimes the rain is, is cold. In this particular side, you can see there's a variety of different types of shelters. The ones over on the right, are uh, wooden, uh, they're, they're handmade, and they're effective. They, they work very well for providing shelter from the wind, shelter from snow, shelter from the rain. Uh, conversely, on the other side are the plastic, and the, uh, these plastic uh, shelters are actually calf hutches. One's rectangular and the other is cylindrical. The fact of the matter is that, that these plastic shelters provide as much protection against the wind, and the rain and the snow as the wooden ones do. And they have the added advantage of that they're, they're very, very light. Uh, one person can move either of those plastic cash shelters. The cylindrical one could be rolled over on its side and moved along just as you might wheel a gigantic donut across a pasture. A rectangular one, an adult can get inside, lift that up, and walk it from one point to another in a pasture. And, that ability to move a shelter is important for pasture management. So uh, goats don't have to have the type of shelter that you can see in the, in the left center there, uh, much like a, an equine would have, but they do need some shelter. Uh, another misconception is that goats don't require much care. Uh, and these photographs uh, are here to, to point to that is a misconception. In the far right, you'll see a newborn kid and the newborn kid is one under a heat lamp and uh, suggests that there needs to be an artificial temperature, temperature means, but also it's wearing a jacket. Uh, this particular jacket is made from a sweatshirt sleeve. It's been cut off of the sweatshirt with two holes put in it for the front legs. Uh, again, this trying to show here that 
that the newborns can be quite fragile and oftentimes they need a significant amount of intervention uh, to ensure they stay alive. On the far left, you see another kid. This one's a little bit older and it's being fed from a bottle. And that's because uh, this kid's mother uh, rejected this kid and wouldn't allow it to nurse. And so uh, a human has to feed this kid goat um, anywhere from six uh, to four times a day uh, initially and that can go on for weeks until the animal is, is essentially weaned and large enough to eat and pasture on its own. In between those two photographs, you can see supplements and different types of feed and medicines that, uh, that are necessary in keeping animals healthy. So uh, I, I'm here to argue that it's a misconception that goats do not require much care. In this picture here, we show the barber pole worm and perhaps the biggest threat to the health of goats in uh, Northern Virginia and actually the Mid-Atlantic are internal parasites. The worst one being this one, the barber pole worm known as the homunculus contortus. When this particular worm collects in, in very large numbers in the gut of the goat, it's oftentimes a, a fatal condition. And so goat owners need to recognize the signs and symptoms of a uh, parasite infestation. And they often have to respond very quickly when they identify a problem, otherwise, a goat may die. I've heard people say that they want to buy goats in order to keep their lawn looking mowed. I suppose that if, if a person's idea of a, of a manicured or a good looking lawn is like what you see in this photograph, then perhaps goats uh, could be an effective lawn tool. But uh, this is kind of what it looks like out in a pasture when you have goats. It's not particularly attractive as, as lawns go. But if that's your standard for lawn care, then okay, maybe goat will be okay for you as a, as a, a landscaping tool. Some people believe that goats will eat just about anything. In fact, there is a idea that goats will eat tin cans. And you may have seen that in, in old cartoons or even more recently. The fact is goats don't eat tin cans. It's only speculation, but the idea that people have associated goats with, with tin cans probably goes back to a time when uh, goats were seen eating the label off of a tin can, and these people simply made the wrong association. It's not that the goat was eating a tin, but rather it was eating the paper on that tin can. Uh, it's perhaps validation of that idea. Uh, over on the right-hand side, we see a photograph, and, and the, the goat is pulling at the paper label on a water heater. Uh, what was interesting in, in this circumstance or situation was that water heater, much like an apple in, in a barrel, would bob up and down. And every time the goat tried to pull at the label, the water heater would submerge and the goat would stand and wait till it came back up again and it would try again. Simply trying to pull at a paper label, uh, maybe it was bored, uh, maybe the glue on the label tasted good, don't know exactly why, but uh, it, it serves as perhaps a, a validation that the paper on tin cans have led people to believe that goats eat tin cans. Oftentimes people think that goats will butt you whenever they can, and, and that's not true. Uh, there are times uh, when, when goats will stand up and they will butt humans or try to, but they really don't see the world as this cartoon from cartoon stock depicts with everyone having a target on their backside. But I would point out that uh, a, a goat Budding is a consideration, and we'll go back to Sasquatch and 300 pounds and point to that image in the lower right-hand corner, and that's, that's a gate uh, within a fence line. And the straight yellow line is there to show you what the gate would look like or how the metal would be if it were not damaged. Uh, but you can see how much damage that Sasquatch was able to do to a gate um, by budding it. So perhaps he was bored or there were goes on the other side that he wanted to, to get to, but uh, he did but, and, uh, and he was able to do some damage. Uh, people believe that goats stink, and for male goats, that's true. And, and so we have uh, two pictures here. Once again, we see Sasquatch, but over on the far right is a different goat. In between these two, Sasquatch really did stink seasonally, not year-round, but seasonally. And, uh, but when, when he was ripe, uh, you could smell him probably uh, a quarter mile away. The, the other goat, not so much. You pretty much have to walk up on that buck in order to, to smell the odor. In the middle, 
is the goat that I showed you earlier. And this is a male goat. He's been castrated. He's not intact. And there really is no odor associated with this goat or his mother, the doe in the background. Uh, so sure, they smell like livestock, but no worse so than, than any other animal that, that lives outside. The male bucks seasonally, that's a different story. Yes, they really can stink. Some people think that male goats or bucks have horns and female goats or does do not, and, and that's not true. In, in these pictures in the upper left, there's a, a newborn kid with her, her mama, and you clearly see the horns. In the top middle is a, another doe, and she has both horns and a beard, although the beard is a little bit difficult to see. The other photographs, you can see male goats, and they have both beards and, uh, and horns. Uh, whereas in the far back of the one in the upper right, uh, that's a doe, and she doesn't have either horns or a beard. The horns or a beard can be found on both male and female. It's not like deer, where a, uh, a buck, a male deer, will have antlers, and the doe will not. All right, so switching around uh, from reasons to consider getting goats to reasons to not consider goats, we're going to go through several. The so first one is, if your property is not zoned to to permit agricultural operations. And more and more that's becoming a consideration uh, in Northern Virginia. And you may find that there are properties that are zoned for agriculture. However, the homeowners association has a covenant that forbids keeping livestock or goats. So those are two things to check before you even consider purchasing goats. Reasons not to consider goats, if, if you're doing so because someone has given you a, a good lead and or uh, it told you that raising goats is a moneymaker. And we talked about that a little bit previously. And, and yes, some people can be profitable with, uh, with a goat operation. But for the most part, breaking even in a commercial goat operation is, is a likely goal. Reasons not consider goats. If your household budget doesn't allow for responsible care, if you don't think that you would be able to provide the the tools and the infrastructure and the feed and the food and the medicine, then it's best just to, to pass on the idea of buying goats. If your household schedule does not allow for care at irregular hours and in all weather conditions, and that is a good indication or a good reason not to get goats. I have a photograph there on the, on the left that shows a couple somewhere, tropical island or Caribbean somewhere. Anyways, they're enjoying their leisure time or vacation. The point being that if you don't have someone who can cover for you while you go away, if you don't have a reliable backup, then you should probably pass on the idea of buying goats. Or if you find that you simply don't want to go outside when it's hot or when it's cold. Uh, the thermometer in the picture on the right-hand side was uh, one that was photographed in Virginia during the day. Uh, it's not a nighttime, and it's about 12 degrees in the uh, the person taking the photograph was also out working with their goats. Uh, so if that's working outside when it's really cold or really hot, um, if that's not appealing, then I encourage you to pass on goats. Or if you don't think that you would be able to provide someone to cover and take care of your goats while you're gone, uh, another reason uh, to pass on goats. If you think that goat ownership is going to be a passing fad, uh, that's that's a good reason not to purchase goats. And so if you if you suspect that if you buy goats at the insistence of your children and four weeks into it, they decided that the goats aren't fun anymore and you don't like the chores associated, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a live animal and there are considerations for keeping it healthy. Uh, there's just basic animal welfare and those are considerations. And if you're not up to that, then go ahead and pass on the goats. Uh, perhaps more common, is predators, uh, and perhaps one of the worst predators is, is a family dog or your neighbor's dog. So if you have a dog that uh, you think may be inclined to, to kill your goat, then it's a good reason not to bring goats home. Another reason is uh, to not consider a goat as if you only want one. Uh, a goat is a herd animal, and there should always be two. You think it's all right if you have a goat and a sheep, or you have a goat and a pony, but there should always be at least two of the herd animals. The, uh, the animals simply don't do well by themselves, um, and they may be physically taken care of, but it becomes mental, and they, uh, they simply don't do well by themselves. 
All right, this is a recording, so there isn't an opportunity for uh, taking and answering questions now. However, I encourage you to contact me either telephonically or to send me an email. Here's my contact information, and I'm more than happy to, to answer your questions about goats and to help you in, uh, in your decision-making process in working through the, all the things to think about if you're, if you're going to buy goats or you don't think you should. Very good. I'm Jim Hillary, and thank you very much.